Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with chapter 6 of microwave engineering. A family of microwave transistor as a part of microwave solid state devices we have been addressing so far. So handling the microwave energy, working with the semiconductor platform, we have gone through several of the devices in the family where we have the microwave bipolar junction transistor for the case of heterojunction and the homojunction types we have seen. Next to that, we have also gone through the understanding of metal to semiconductor field defect transistor, high electron mobility transistor, the JFET that it is junction field defect transistor was also addressed. So after these particular field defect transistor and further the memory devices, we have another device that it is charge coupled devices to address for the microwave applications. So let us see the details. So here we start with our topic. The topic is titled charge coupled devices. So as we are dealing with the devices, those have microwave application. So what is the microwave application of the charge coupled devices? So when we see that the microwave application possible with the help of charge coupled devices, which can be simply abbreviated as CCDs is the infrared detection and imaging. For another kind of application also the CCD is very very popular that it is a very wide domain of research. It is nothing but digital signal processing. So when we talk about the infrared detection and imaging, so infrared refers to a particular frequency range here. As we know that for the case of microwave, it is nothing but the electromagnetic wave having the frequency range from 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. So when we see the frequency spectrum with respect to the spectral diagram here, infrared is also the frequency range near the optical range here. So on that particular frequency of signal, the detection and further imaging is made possible. So that time the CCDs will be working as the sensors to acquire the information in the form of image there. Further, the digital signal processing we shall already uh, studied with shall be definitely addressing at the end here. Now what are exactly the CCDs or charged coupled devices? So when we talk about the structure, the structure with respect to the semiconductor platform is that these are nothing but the metal oxide semiconductor structure. So metal oxide semiconductor we make the abbreviation as MOS here. The oxide for example SiO2 is nothing but the insulator. So most of the times MOS is also referred to as MIS metal insulator and semiconductor. So the CCDs charge coupled devices are nothing but having the structure of metal oxide semiconductor MOS or MIS diodes here. Now what is the characteristic of these particular diodes that in the semiconductor structure formed by these three layers there the charge can be transferred with a predetermined path which is under the control of supplied clock pulses. So this is simply the introduction we can give for the charged coupled devices. How the charge coupled devices will be working, definitely we shall see the operating mechanism. Now let us first of all see what are the types of CCDs available. CCDs are of three types here. The first type of the CCD is called as surface channel CCD, charge coupled device. The second type is called as buried channel 
चार्ज कपल डिवाइस सो इट इज सी सी डी एंड वी हैव द थर्ड टाइप एट द एंड द थर्ड टाइप इज कॉल्ड एज जंक्शन सी सी डी सो द नेम्स रिगार्डिंग द टाइप्स ऑफ द चार्ज कपल डिवाइसेज आर वेरी सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी हियर हियर द ट्रांसफर ऑफ द चार्जेस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द प्री डिटर्मिन पाथ corresponding to the controlled amount of clock pulses will be with respect to the surface area of the semiconductor whereas this is with respect to the deep area of the semiconductor hence the name buried whereas it is with respect to the p n junction in the case of third type of the charge coupled devices here now let us address the operating mechanism for the charge coupled devices here so for operational mechanism of charge coupled devices we take the help of one diagram so in this diagram on to the left hand side we have a structure where first of all we have a metal shown with a shaded portion here next to that we have the insulator material so this is the interface represented by the insulator which makes communication with respect to the metal on left hand side and now here we have semiconductor on right hand side so here we have a selection of n type of the semiconductor here now in this particular diagram we plot the energy energy on to the vertical axis here going upward here and as we have the energy plotted in this particular diagram we can say this is nothing but the energy band diagram here so corresponding to the time t is equal to 0 we shall see the changes with respect to the energy in terms of the charge carriers also we can consider here so now this particular corner is nothing but the depletion age and here we have the energy band difference here that can be represented by v1 where we have the dashed line representing the fermi level for the semiconductor region and this is the uniform energy level that we have in this particular diagram so in this diagram the difference of energy level v1 we consider for the ccd to be the external gate voltage also and with the application of external gate voltage for the n type of the semiconductor taken under consideration here initially we don't have any of the charges with respect to the insulating material here so initially with respect to the applied potential here the n type semiconductor region is at comparative positive polarity or polarity having the positive potential here whereas the metal is at the negative potential i can say here but as the time passes so we can take in general t is equal to infinity again plotting the energy here the metal portion on this particular side the n type of the semiconductor on right hand side and the same kind of the insulating material in between the metal and semiconductor here we find the accumulation of the holes which are nothing but the positive charges on to the insulating material for the same applied gate potential we can say represented as v1 whereas the depletion age that it was here on to the left hand side diagram here has shifted towards the insulating layer here so this is the depletion age and on to this horizontal axis we have taken the distance measurement so which distinguishes between the two diagrams at the time has passed right from the start that it is t is equal to 0 we get the equilibrium potential with a try and this is sometimes also referred to as self induced type of drifting of the charges that have the positive holes on this insulating material here
now we shall be addressing the three phase structure with respect to the charge coupled devices here now as the last figure has given us the structure with respect to the charge coupled device that it is a metal oxide semiconductor or metal insulator semiconductor so ccd is nothing but the array of all such mis diodes here so in this diagram we show you the three types so represented one two and three here so for the three mis structure that have been generated that have been grown onto the end type of the silicon semiconductor material separated with the insulating material SiO2 the silicon dioxide here and these are the various metal contacts here so corresponding to all the three MIS structures here we can make the application of the gate potential as V1 V2 and V3 here so now on application of the gate potential of negative type here so here we have let us say for example v1 is equal to minus 5 volt v2 is equal to minus 10 volt whereas v3 is equal to minus 15 volt here so on application of the negative potential there it is the generation of potential well so i must refer it is the potential well that can store the charges so this is the potential well with respect to or at the gate electrode so here we have the potential well with respect to the first gate with respect to the second gate with respect to the third gate here now we can represent for the electrode one here for the electrode two we can repeat the same and for the electrode three we can be having the representation at this particular place here now when we continue with v1 is equal to minus 5 v2 is equal to minus 10 volt and v3 is equal to minus 15 volt so see here initially we have considered the v2 to be more negative than that of the v1 so whatever the potential well that used to be for the corresponding electron one so those charges have been shifted to the potential well at this second electrode represented by the positive charge carriers here There's, these are nothing but the holes here now here in this diagram these holes at the potential well corresponding to the second electrode are getting shifted to the potential well at the third one so this is the simple explanation with respect to how the charges are getting shifted from one potential well to another potential well with the control of gate voltage like this so the example three we have taken for the closely associated mis or mos diodes here that is the structure of charge coupled devices here so the shift of the charges it is from potential one well one to that of potential well two to that of potential well three here so here it is the same type of the n type silicon material where we have the representation of insulator material by the sio2 and these are the semiconductor metal contact here now let us take the help of another schematic diagram which will give you better explanation with respect to the store and transfer of the charges here so in this particular schematic diagram we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine corresponding closely associated mis diodes we can see here now with respect to the diode number one we have the potential v1 applied with respect to the diode number two we can apply the potential represented by the symbol v2 whereas for the potential applied to that of the third diode we have the representation by v3 here so let us take the situation that the time is equal to t 
one instant here so initially when v1 is more negative than that of the v2 and v3 we have the potential well corresponding to the first diode here filled with the charges those have been represented by the positive holes here similarly the fourth diode is also connected to that of the v1 it is also filled with the positive holes here and also the seventh one is also connected to that of the v1 it is also filled with the positive holes here now when we go to the time instant t is equal to t2 where we again have the supply of v1 v2 v3 corresponding to the diodes here we have 1 4 and 7 for v1 for v2 we have 2 5 and 8 and for v3 we have 3 6 and 9 there so now we see the shift of holes from the first potential well to that of the second one similar is the situation we find from the potential well corresponding to 4 to that of the 5 here and from potential well 7 to that of the potential well at the 8th diode I can say here. Now when we go for the time instant T is equal to T3 when still we have the V1, V2 and V3 applied here but here we have the V2 more negative as compared to that of V1 and V3. So that time the situation that it was from the previous diagram will be at a stable state here. So here the same that is for the second and here it is for the fifth here and here it is the eighth diode corresponding potential well will be having the storage with respect to the positive holes here. Now as we have gone through the three types of the charge couple devices the first one that it is the surface channel charge couple device CCD here. We have another schematic diagram which has the semiconductor material of the P type of the silicon material. The insulator represented by SiO2 having the width of small d here and the metal contact we have made where the gate potential Vg is applied to it. So here we can take the three axes Z, X and Y corresponding to the dimensional view here. So for this type of metal oxide semiconductor structure for the charge coupled devices again the help of the energy band diagram is there. So this is shaded portion corresponding to the metal and this is the Fermi level a solid line corresponding to the energy of the metal here. So in the P type of the semiconductor as for the N type semiconductor the energy levels were downwards uncompared to that of the metal here the energy levels are at highest values for the p type of the silicon material here so this is the first solid line and the second one so the dashed line shows the fermi level here where in this particular situation it is the case that q suffix sig q signal is equal to zero that it means the storage of the charge corresponding to the insulating material that separates the semiconductor and metal is equal to zero so in such a situation if we consider the potential well developed into the semiconductor material that it is empty so here in this diagram the well is empty here now when we have the q suffix sig accumulated at the insulator portion here insulator layer we can say so q sig is greater than that of the zero we find little changes with respect to the energy levels of the semiconductor material so here as we have dealt with respect to the surface channel ccd i can say the first type here so that time the potential with respect to the surface of the semiconductor material has lowered down to certain extent here and here the corresponding potential well is now partially filled here so i just mention here partially filled potential well here 
Now let us address certain dynamic characteristic with respect to the device charge coupled devices. For the dynamic characteristic, we have the first measurement in terms of the parameter that it is charge transfer efficiency. The charge transfer efficiency can also be denoted by the symbol eta here. So whatever the charge has been transferred from the previous potential well to that of the next potential well, this is the measure of the same. Now we can express this charge transfer efficiency in another words where we have the measure of charge that has been left behind when most of the charge is transferred to the next well. So that charge that has been left behind we can say it is the transfer loss. So it can be accounted by the symbol epsilon here. So simply the charge transfer efficiency eta can be expressed as 1 minus epsilon. So this formulation is very very important as far as the dynamic characteristics in terms of the charge transfer efficiency for charge coupled devices considered there. Now if we have the single charge pulse with the initial amplitude denoted by capital P sub 0 that transfers down the CCD register. So we can say that shift of charge from one potential well to that of the another potential well to be the shift registered here. So in general, it can be having n number of transfers from one to another potential well here. So now in general, the amplitude becomes P sub x n here and this P sub x n will be calculated as the initial amplitude P sub x 0 in multiplication to the charge transfer efficiency eta to the power small n here. So n are the number of transfers, the number of phases in, in other words we can see here. P sub x n can also be expressed as capital P sub x 0 in the bracket 1 minus n into epsilon here where epsilon is very very less than that of the one here. So this is the first parameter charge transfer efficiency for the dynamic characteristics. Now the second parameter corresponding to dynamic characteristic is nothing but the frequency response. Now as far as the charge coupled devices are concerned the frequency response is limited at very high frequency ranges as well as very low frequency ranges. So the moderate range of frequencies are permissible or giving us good result with respect to the operation of the CCD here. Whereas the maximum operating frequency we can simply denote by F sub x max is limited or is dependent on to the channel length here. Now after the frequency response we have the third and the last dynamic characteristic performance metric that is called as power dissipation. When the various parameters the attributes with respect to the charge coupled devices are considered the power dissipation is the one so simply represented by capital P in terms of the n number of the transfers from one well to another well in multiplication to the frequency value also in multiplication to the applied gate voltage and the total amount of charge that has been stored so we have represented it by Q max here so this is the formulation corresponding to the power dissipation of the charge coupled device. Now finally commenting back to the applications corresponding to the charge coupled devices, the first application is infrared detection and imaging. So for imaging purpose, we have the two types that it is the optical imaging and the microwave imaging. So in the case of optical imaging, certainly the sun rays are illuminating the objects into the scenario and those reflections are captured back 
by the sensor. Whereas into the microwave imaging here, the sensor is eliminating the object with the help of certain microwave frequencies which are reflected back and captured by the sensors here. So now mostly the CCDs come for the microwave type. So they are the active sensors we can see here. So initially the array that is required to have imaging made possible. So initially it had only the 12 by 12 photo detectors to have imaging made possible at the time when it was invented. Then the growth has shifted to 128 into 128 photo detectors. The material used for the purpose of the infrared detection and the imaging is also for example given as indium antimonide. So it is represented with the formulation of INSB here. And next to that we have the application of digital signal processing I can say. In the digital signal processing the charge coupled device CCD can be used for the purpose of introducing a delay into the signal or it is also used in the terms of multiplexing, demultiplexing to have the storage in the terms of digital memory. Digital filtering is also there then we can have the logic gates also made possible with the help of CCDs here. So we just limit the applications into the DSP. So I hope this much of addressing for the charge coupled devices is enough and by the next lecture we shall be having a simple practice for the two numericals based on to the charge coupled devices. So for more information and the knowledge of microwave engineering you can subscribe to ekeda channel. Thank you.